Imagine having a great job, living in a beautiful house by the river. Life is going good. And before you know it, within one year, everything comes crashing down. It's, it just feels like a never-ending nightmare. It all started two years ago when she purchased this home in Jasper, Ontario, along the Rideau River. Listed at $465,000, Vanessa says she ended up paying $200,000 over asking. But just seven months later, she was laid off from her well-paying job at Microsoft. And at the same time, soaring interest rates nearly doubled her mortgage payments as she faces bankruptcy. You literally go from owning a property and having a, a, a job with a great income to being faced with homelessness all in less than a year. I want people to know that this is a possibility for, for anybody. Hello everyone, my name is Dear Kola. I have lived in Canada for over 25 years. Welcome back to this side of life. And if you're new here, welcome and thank you all for joining me today. So, what do you think about that story? Vanessa had it all good. But when things are going well, we need to save for the rainy day. I think that's what she didn't do. You know, you come in as an immigrant into Canada, either to now or later you get a good job, you settle in and you start making the money. Don't be like those people in some other places who when they have the money now, it is time to show it off and spend the money, let people know you have money, buy things you cannot afford with money you don't really have to impress people you don't really like. We need to save for the rainy day. And that is why personal finance people always talk about the emergency fund. How much do you need to set aside for your emergency fund? They always say three months of expenses, but I would say when you have a good job like this, you have the money coming in, you should save at least six months of expenses in your emergency fund so that when anything happens and things happen, like jobs are lost, the car breaks down, something happens to the house, something happens with your children that needs money. Yes, you will need some money and that is what the emergency fund is for. And I think that is part of what Vanessa did not do. She did not have an emergency fund to be able to uh, help her during this time. And there are also several resources that you can draw on to help you learn how to manage your personal finances. One of the resources that we use in my family to help us with our finances is the Dave Ramsey resources. Dave Ramsey is a personal finance coach and teacher and he has books, he has shows that talk about personal finance. And I find it very interesting because I get to hear the stories of people and their experience so that I can learn from it. So yeah, you need to get yourself such resources that will help you, especially if you're coming into a new country and you're trying to familiarize yourself with the financial system and how money works. Vanessa should have had an emergency fund. The second thing wrong with the picture is that she seemed to have beaten more than she could chew in terms of the price of the house. Here in Canada, there comes these times when, because you know, real estate goes up and down. And there comes these times when people are just in a frenzy to buy houses. And so the prices are going up and everybody's like hurrying and trying to get the house before the price goes up. And people will be telling you, especially, you know, like your realtor and the people that make money out of the business of selling houses, they'll be telling you like, oh, now is the time to buy the house. And, and you know, if you wait one month, the prices will double. <laughs> Whenever that kind of situation exists, I think you need to take a pause and think about what you're about to do. And I am also speaking to myself because this has happened to me before. I used to have a pastor who said that there will always be a deal, no matter which day it is. Today there is a deal, tomorrow there will be a deal, next year there will be a deal. So on that real estate, there will always be a deal. Even if people are saying, oh, if you don't buy that thing now, then the world is going to come to an end. Ah, no, the world will not come to an end. There will still be another time. <laughs> there will still be another deal. Don't be in a hurry to spend your money. Always take a step back and consider what you are about to do. Especially when people are in a frenzy, that is not the best time to rush into something. Like she didn't have to have that house by the river. She should have looked for another house that was more affordable and she would probably be better for it if she did that. You don't want to be house poor. You don't want to have house fever. And I had a video about that. Don't get house fever because it's going to come back to bite you such that you are spending the majority of your income on your house and then 
you are not able to spend on other areas of your life. Don't be house poor. So that's the second lesson that we can learn from Vanessa. Don't bite more than you can chew. There's no way that buying $200,000, 50% above asking price is a good idea. Look at the numbers. Look at your finances. Can you afford it? And is it a wise decision? Talk to other people. Uh, One thing I find is that people, especially in this part of the world, are very individualistic. They don't really seek advice. They feel like they are self-sufficient. No, no man is an island. There are people who have better experience in this thing than you do. Seek out people, talk to people, ask for advice. And don't just go blindly and do something that you will regret. Change can happen. You could get laid off. You could move. Things can change. So be prepared for change. So for example, if you're working in a corporate job, it's advisable for you to not just rest on your oars, especially if you're in these Western countries. Don't rest on your oars and think that, oh, you have arrived and this is a job you're going to have for life. I think that was in the past when people had a job for life. You need to think about what trainings you can do, what courses you can do to improve yourself. You need to keep up your networking. Make sure that you are out there, you are keeping yourself up to date in your career, you are keeping yourself up to date in your field, so that if anything happens, then you have something to fall back on. You can do different businesses or different hustles on the side to make money, so that if anything goes wrong with with your main source of income, you can always have something to fall back on. In this day and age, don't rely on one source of income. Invest your money in things that will bring you returns so that you are not just relying on one source of income. And different things that you can do on the side to earn money, I also talked about in one of the videos uh, that I will link up here. So check it out. And don't be like Vanessa, because yes, that can happen to you in Canada. People lose their jobs all the time. In fact, sometimes we talk about it and say, okay, it's, it's almost like it's something that the companies have to do. You know, every so often, especially nowadays, they have to just go through and lay some people off and then start again. (laughs) And then a few years after that, they lay people off again. It is a reality of life here. Uh, You cannot depend on having your job for life. So you have to be prepared for that. And finally, you need to pray and trust God to provide for you and also to lead you and guide you in the way that you should go. Some people, they shouldn't be in a particular career or line of business that they are in. Their success, their blessings are in something else. But who knows? It's only God who knows. And and so we need to depend on God to lead and guide us to the right path in our lives. Doing all this, I believe we can avoid getting into the trap that Vanessa found herself in. I saw that story and I just wanted to talk about some of the lessons that we can learn from it. I hope you have gotten something out of this video in terms of avoiding going homeless or bankrupt in Canada. That's all I had for today. Thank you so much for joining me again. And let me know what you think in the comment section below. Do you have any other lessons or tips that we can use to avoid going homeless and bankrupt in the environment that we are in, in Canada or anywhere else in the world, let us know in the comment section below. And don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you know whenever I upload new videos. Also stay tuned to this channel for more interesting content coming your way. Until I come your way again, until the next video, you go out and make it the best days of your life. Bye!